Thanks. So I think we will move to the second theme, which is self-preferencing, and this one is for you, Carl. Um, so the EU and the US presently consider bans on self-preferencing, which would require vertically integrated platforms to treat third parties the same as they treat their own units. And the question is whether competition laws ban uh, uh, discrimination by dominant firms or should we agree to self-preferencing? So let me talk, I'm very much talking here in answering about regulation, not about antitrust law with, in the United States at least, which you know is so very narrow in terms of imposing duties. And this would be a duty of a sort, right? To, equal treatment. I'm not saying you can't reach any of it with antitrust law, but it's, it's proven to be very difficult. So, so I want to focus on regulatory proposals, noting that, that this is around the world, we're seeing these proposals now. And that there's a lot of really, it's very intuitive, like, hey, just treat the other guys the way you treat your own stuff. Like, what's the problem? I'm not telling you how to deal with stuff, just be fair. Okay. So at that level, it's incredibly, it's alluring, it's attractive. It's it's almost it's, so you can see why the politicians and may, probably many of the people on this on this at this meeting um, are very it's very tempting. But then we get in the devil in the details and knowing that Fiona is listening, I'll try to be constructive. Um, but it really is very tricky to do this well. Let me use as my example the recent um, it's called the Platform Anti-Monopoly Act, which um, Representative Cicilline himself introduced. Uh, it's just a bill at this point, House Judiciary Committee, that reflects the politics, but also some of the, the tricky parts. So this is an attempt to, um, to do exactly this, this non, no discriminated, non, non-preferencing, you know, anti-bias, okay? No self-preferencing, let's call it. So first off, you have to say, well, who does it apply to? It's a regulation, it's not the, the whole economy. So there's a notion of a covered platform. So you have to define who that is. It's interesting in this case, how they do it. First off, it's for the FTC or DOJ to designate a platform being covered. It's pretty clear they've written it to capture the big four firms we're always talking about, you know, Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook. And they do that by having three conditions, at least, at least a half a million users. Um, a crit- the platform is a critical trading partner, partner, party, partner, okay, and I'll define that in a moment. And then critically, the owner of the platform has a market cap of at least $600 billion, okay? Which is a pretty transparent way having little to do with the platform itself to uh, cabin in so you don't pick up. If you didn't have that, there'd be a lot more firms that would be subject to this. So that's not that many, half a million trading. I mean, you can go have a long list. And then a critical trading partner is, is sort of what it sounds like. They define it pretty broadly. Basically, if there are a bunch of businesses or users who really need this, you know, who, who would be access, access is valuable to them and important, then you're critical. Okay. So that's, so you define that. And then they have a long list of things. Uh, it's illegal to engage in conduct that advantages the covered platform's own products, services, or lines of business over these rivals, rivals that would use it. Okay. So you can't advantage your own stuff. You can't exclude or disadvantage others. And you can't materially discriminate among similarly situated parties. So it's a lot like a common carrier type of rule, if you, if, you know, from telecom that we see. Um, but then you have to say to yourself, well, what does it mean to advantage your own stuff, right? So that seems pretty broad. Um, and then there's a long list of things that they that they're included by that. So there's actually like ten items that you basically can't do. Um, Things like um, uh, including interoperability. So this actually sweeps in interoperability, but you can't impede or restrict the capacity of dependent businesses to access or interface with the platform operating system, hardware or software features that are available to the covered platform's own products. Okay, um, there's, you can't use data from it. You can't block on installation. Okay, a long list of things. Okay, and then there's some affirmative defenses. So the, the company can say, no, it's really important to do this, but I think that's gonna be pretty hard. Those, are, those will be hard to defend, okay? And the remedies are quite strong. Very large fines if you violate this and uh, injunctions to stop doing it, disgorgement of unearned profits and possibly even divestiture. 
Okay, so it's it's written very strongly. Um, so this is a good articulation of what one might try to do or do. Okay, I mean you can write it down. There they are. So now let's talk about well how how it work. I mean would, how would that work in practice? Um, let's think of some examples. Um, what what this would mean. Um, and this is where um, I think it is very hard to do this well. An agency that's going to enforce this is going to have to be well-staffed and resourced, okay, um, very much so. And um, it's, it's, it's just hard work, okay, and there's sort of how do you do it and then would it, even be, would it be a good idea to do all these things? So as an example, let me go a few examples just to see how tricky it is. So take Amazon. So they've got their own Amazon Basics where they sell a lot of products under their own name. And of course they have third party sellers. So when you do a search for a product, what if they list stuff based on margin, profit margin, that they list stuff with their profit margin higher because it's more profitable to them. Totally neutral, but they make higher profits on their own stuff. Is that gonna be allowed? Um, what if they uh, put in best sellers first, okay? And Amazon has a big name, so a lot of their stuff becomes best sellers. Is that neutral? Is that fair? Is that advantaging your own products? What about Apple? Um, uh, suppose they want to put um, some sort of child protection stuff into their into the iOS, um, or it's an app. Is it is it part of the iOS? Do they fold it in instead of it being an app? Is that self preferencing? Is it okay if they put it as part of the platform? Then it's okay. I don't think the I don't think the competitors who are doing that are going to agree, right? So the boundary between the platform and what's on the platform is tricky. What about the commission structure, which is a big issue, I guess, in Epic versus Apple? They charge a big commission to apps. Well, fine, they can charge their own app a big commission, but we know that's money in one pocket, out the other. That's funny money. So how do you treat that? Um, in Google case, we have a real case. We have the Google Shopping case, which I worked on for Google, and is a pretty screwed up case for the commission, in my view, in the sense that Google basically put in a bunch of of uh, what they call product listing ads that had richer information and the comparative shopping services complained. Um, but was that uh, discriminatory because they changed the structure that, so they showed richer ads and took more of the search results page to show ads? The commission didn't object to that, that mix between ads and organic search results. Is that discrimination or is that just, this is how they monetize the product and they chose ads with images rather than text ads. Um, so, uh, so I think when you add dynamics to all of this, a platform says that, oh, the people are doing some cool things. Let's add that to the platform. Let's integrate it in. That sounds like it's going to be a real problem under this. So um, I'm very concerned about how this would work. Um, I think it could spin out of control pretty easily and cause a lot of problems. Uh, while it seems like a good idea, and I think there are ways to do it well. It's very hard. Great, thanks. Anyone else? Fiona, aren't you going to give us the answer how to do it really easily? Let, let's get structural separations on the table, um, and then maybe we have a discussion about you know, do people agree that there's some problem? And if there is, where do, to Fiona's point, where do we go? Yeah, and to set that up, I might just respond by saying, I think that the non-discrimination bill as written has a private right of action. So I would imagine that every single app developer paying a fee on Apple or who didn't like the contract with Google or who didn't like the contract with Amazon would promptly sue. And that would Sorry, be, is that right? No, it has no private right of action. Of course, that could be changed. It's for the DOJ or the FTC to enforce. Okay, I saw a version. I read, it, right of action. I read it pretty carefully. I think okay. that's right. Okay, so then, then uh, my concern is not as valid. I, I would, if you put a private right of action in here, then you get an explosion. I think in cases, and that would be something to watch out for. Let me just add a quick observation. My son is sixth grader and I tried to explain to him what we are going to do here today. And I told him that one of the issues is anti-discrimination clauses in antitrust. 
And he was quite shocked by the idea. He said, well, you know, we've been trying to fight discrimination for so many decades or centuries, and we haven't done it effectively. So now antitrust agencies will do it better and quickly. So I think that this is something that captured the intuition, but if sixth grader gets that, it's, I think it's quite surprising that people think it's administrable. Well, I'm not sure that some of the biggest supporters have really worried themselves about those details or want to really. Um, and I think, um, but you know, I think where Nancy's taking us and I agree is if you don't have structural separation, you get, you know, what the, what Cicilline and as we say, inherent conflicts of interest between the platform and the, 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 the apps or, or sellers on it. And that seems fraught as well. Now, NHS has dealt with this for a long time and arguably maybe not done very much. So now people are saying, you know, we need to do more here. 